Portfolio Builder members, welcome to our Monday webinar. I'll start off with a short presentation and then unmute everybody in there. So if you want to have your headset or microphone ready to chat, we welcome you. And if you prefer to just type your questions, you can send those in via your little question chat box as well. So the first thing I'd like to do is just review what happened between Friday and to today, uh, as well as the current trade alert. So Friday we sold the 287 strike for $1.69 while the SPY traded at 288.27. And I'll go into a full screen mode, zoom in. And so you can see we've been playing it safe for, for over a week now. And uh, this is the first time this is actually starting to pay off for us. So we agreed to take a small loss on the underlying when we entered the covered call and made up for that with the credit we received. And so this is the safest way to bet down in the stock market uh, because if you buy call options on the VIX or put options on any stock, you can quickly lose your uh, value. Oh, hey, hey Jerry, uh, no worries, buddy. I will see you tomorrow if you can't make today's webinar. Thanks for stopping in to say hi. Uh, and we got a lot of regulars in there. I'll unmute everybody to chat after we get through a quick presentation. So we did the defensive spy trade. This is the way we can make money if the market's flat, up, or slightly down. And so today we covered this trade for a profit on the covered call. And this is a case where you might've thought it would make sense to just let this expire because we had a, built, a baked into the cake profit of $55 per contract. But because the implied volatility jumped, we, we had to give back some of that profit when we covered. So at the moment we covered, the SPY had dropped in value by 20 cents. So our net profit from Friday to today was $35. So once again, if we had let this just go to expiration, uh, we'd end up with that baked into the cake $55 profit. So why did I issue a trade alert to cover it and write a new one today? Well, because the implied volatility is a little higher, that means our option premium is a little higher today. And so that's why we want to uh, really never be out of the market unless we think there's a extremely disastrous event ahead uh, because otherwise we do really well in a slow boring market that's up slightly down slightly or flat uh, and I want to point out that even with that tiny profit which is only a 0.11 percent return from Friday until today we had downside protection in our portfolio, which most people out there did not have, uh, and downside protection that doesn't cost us anything. Well, if you are able to generate a 0.11% annualized, or rather return 156 times a year, that's three times a week, 52 weeks a year, you still generate an 18.7% return over the course of a year, which is outstanding. Now, in general, we don't want to be writing in the money covered calls and, uh, and being so defensive. But in today's presentation, you'll see why I'm recommending a bit of caution going into April, despite it being one of the seasonally strongest months of the year. OK, so we made a little cash from Friday to Monday. We played it safe. We gave our portfolio protection uh, when certain things aren't making sense. And we wrote the new covered call. Let's jump into some PowerPoint slides. Then we'll look at the track record in more detail. And after that, we'll open up for questions. So let me pull the PowerPoint I have ready for today. Now a quick look at the cover, uh, today's trade alert. Uh, the new trade is to do the 286 strike, uh, which is a little bit lower than the current trading price. And for the first time, the option market's starting to agree with us in terms of being defensive. And like I've said, every single time I've tried to outsmart the market, 
and uh, predict a down move before the market was, the opposite happens. So we've had zero luck uh, outsmarting the market. And this product's all about not trying to outsmart the market. It's really about just following the market and pulling a consistent return over and over and over again. So today, the market has a lot of volume flowing through that 286 strike, 286.50, 287. Uh, so we went with the 286 strike. Okay, so let's jump into the PowerPoint slide and then we'll look at the track record. So what I've collected here are primarily charts and quotes from either Zero Hedge, Seeking Alpha, or Bloomberg, which are the three main sources I track day to day. Okay, blinded by love, tech stocks rise to record highs despite forecast profit declines. Uh, I didn't find a lot of good slides about uh, the potential for bank profits deteriorating this month, uh, but that's what the main talking points were on Bloomberg this morning. Okay, so here's the NASDAQ composite skyrocketing up. And so what is causing this remarkable uh, rise in stocks? The biggest buyer is the corporate buybacks. And you can see a greater and greater percentage of capital is going directly into stock buybacks. Uh, and the nice thing about stock buybacks is that the corporation probably won't be uh, ever selling those shares. If anything, they might use them to acquire um, another company. So this helps the long-term outlook for stock prices, of course. And the stock buybacks uh, greatly outweigh uh, every other type of investor, uh, including retail, even though retail owns a huge percentage of that. A uh, quick look at the important data. Primarily, we have some uh, sentiment indicators we're looking out for today, uh, or rather this week, and um, some inflation data coming out Wednesday and Thursday. That's very important. Uh, and then Friday starts a lot of the bank reporting. Some of the data that is expected for today, I have already grabbed the slides. U.S. factory order momentum is slowing down. Uh, so we can see that decline, and we can see that the... Uh, Stocks have a mind of their own right now. The data out of Germany continues to deteriorate, uh, which is one of the powerhouses for uh, exports, a good leading indicator for the global health of the economy. Uh, another big buyer of stocks. This is the only central bank that can actually, of at least of the large ones, that will actually buy stocks. So. Fed only buys treasuries and uh, mortgage-related loans. The ECB has gone to the extent of going into corporate bonds, but the Bank of Japan is completely lost it. They are buying up stocks. And so you can see their holdings uh, have definitely been helping out this latest uh, bull market alongside the corporations. Now, who missed out on this big run-up? Uh, primarily the, the stock pickers, you know, these excellent hedge fund managers uh, have been very uh, leery. They sold during the December crash, and uh, for the most part, retail and hedge funds have primarily been the biggest uh, group of people missing out on this. This is a chart uh, that is trying to explain what's going on with the dollar, point A, strong U.S. economy, U.S. economic growth is robust and outperforms that of the rest of the world, attracting capital flows. Uh, point B, synchronized growth, global growth is synchronized, the U.S. economy is growing, but inflation remains stable. As a result, U.S. monetary policy is neutral. And then point C, synchronized slowdown, that's what we're entering into. Uh, the U.S. economy, along with the rest of the world, enters a slowdown. The Fed and other policymakers attempt to reflate the global economy by easing monetary policies. So that's what a lot of people think we're headed towards, uh, and you can see that in the bond market. 
another interesting article out is this debate about the importance of the U.S. yield curves uh, inverting and then steepening. And uh, one banker came out saying, well, who cares? It usually means it doesn't happen for 16 months. So, uh, so buy stocks. Here's another chart that came out just pointing out how much central banks have been stepping in to prop the market. Anytime there's a sell-off, there's been a big intervention by the central banks. Uh, another interesting article out just to bring to everyone's attention. Uh, this Saudi Aramco did a bond offering and it's supposedly it's four times over prescribed showing that it has more profits than a lot of the biggest American companies. It's a huge oil company. And uh, the demand for that bond just shows how desperate investors are to, uh, to find places to generate yield with uh, some $11 trillion in negative rates in the government bonds now out. This is another interesting article from Seeking Alpha, where, which I've pulled out the highlights from Fundamental Capital. The US stock market is almost at all time highs. Macro data is still weak, although it's improved a little recently. The stock market's price action points to new highs for 2019. While the bull market could keep going on, the long term risk versus reward no longer favors bulls towards the end of the bull market. Um, some leading indicators show deterioration. The housing sector has already started to deteriorate all over the world. The labor market starts to deteriorate. That's not yet happening. Uh, and then after that, we'd expect other indicators to deteriorate. So we can see the jobs market in the U.S. still looking very strong, which helps support this huge push towards U.S.-based products, uh, whether it's bonds or equity, equities. Uh, corporate profits continue to be very strong. And now we have this complacency in the option market. The amount of puts to calls is getting abnormally low, which we can see right here. Uh, and we also have a very rare point in time uh, where we have a 15% crash and a 15% reversal in a very short period of time, 15 weeks. So we can see this has only been uh, documented in this graph six times. And in general, it's led to a profit a year later. So that goes back to this whole idea that, uh, you know, we might be at the end of a big bubble bull market melt up. Uh, April has not had a losing month in years. And so their uh, conclusion to all this was that the long term look is, is not so hot. And I guess that really coincides with everyone from Ray Dalio to, to all the big hedge fund managers. Uh, but short term, everything looks great. So we've entered this world where everybody doesn't care about fundamentals. They just care about momentum and what's going to happen uh, in the next week. So you're telling me there's a guaranteed crash in stocks, but not yet. So we can still make it work for a little longer. That's the basic mindset. These, uh, the stock market has adapted. I'll pop over to our track record. And before we look at the track record, just a quick look at the Dow. The point of this product is to help investors generate a profit uh, regardless of what's happening in the stock market. And so there's big periods of time that would be a huge problem for anyone going into retirement. If, if you're somewhere, you know, if we're somewhere along the lines of a 1964, maybe we have another year of melt up. Uh, but then what happens if we have a 10 or 20 year 
crash and recovery. So if you had invested into the stock market uh, because it was going straight up and you thought it would never stop anywhere from 1962 to 1965, you had a rough time after that. You didn't make it back to even until the 90s. So can you afford to buy and hold right now uh, and potentially have 30 years of negative or flat returns? So that's a big concern. And our strategy certainly does not take advantage of uh, trying to capture every last tick of upside movement. In fact, we try to do the opposite. We're much more interested in making a small profit if it goes up, but being protected if it starts to head the other direction. Um, and that's the, the main value of a covered call. And what's interesting about the SPY is it's one of the few, it's actually the only option uh, market where you have expirations every two days. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you can see that we can constantly track the price of the SPY and adjust our covered call to protect our capital and generate consistent profits. Now headed back to our track record, a little quick overview. Your default setting will put a 90% target on the income and a 10% cash position. We want the cash position for two reasons. One, if you are using this strategy to generate retirement income, you're gonna to wanna to have a little cash cushion so you can withdraw money from your brokerage account uh, when you need to, to pay your bills. The other reason is if things do get a little hairy in the stock market, we will put on a hedge, but we're reluctant to do that till the market's actually starting uh, to show momentum to the downside. So it's important to have that. If you want to follow our Friday trade alert, you may consider putting 10% or more of your portfolio into this section by just entering 10% and then decreasing this to 80%. This would allow you to play our TBT trade as well as our SPY trade. Now I'm gonna undo that. Uh, in order to show the results separately of these two strategies, I'm oh, sorry. We have separated it so you can see our return on the SPY trades in this spreadsheet, whereas Friday we will publish all the information about our TBT trade. So TBT is trailing the SPY's profit slightly, but it costs a lot less to get involved. You can buy 100 shares of the TBT for 33.64 per share right now. And again, that one only trades on Friday because it only has weekly options. So for those of you wanting to get started with a lot less cash, you need about 4,000 bucks to follow the TBT. Also, we do recommend the Robinhood brokerage firm uh, because it has a great phone app and free trading, absolutely no commission costs. Quick review of how to use a spreadsheet. We don't enter anything into here. This is just a nice way to see your results. The darker shaded cells are the ones you can edit. This is where we keep track of buying and selling our shares. Positive is buy, negative is sell. Over here, we keep track of our open covered call positions. So this is the current position. And then down here, when we close them, they go to this section. If we slide over a little more, we have the ability to go long options. And uh, th this is actually not accurate. Our feature to pull the live prices from Yahoo is currently not working, but uh, these are some old hedges we don't recommend you put on, uh, which I will close <clears throat> and turn into one position that's easy to follow when the time comes. So that's a good summary of how our strategy works. Let's go ahead and uh, open this up to our group now, see if you guys have any questions. We've got quite a few folks in here. If you don't wish to speak or if you have audio going on that's unrelated to our conversation, right. go ahead and uh, click your little mic and you can mute yourself. Henry 
Somebody wants to know what the max drawdown of the SPY was during the uh, December crash. Uh, see, our thing doesn't calculate day-to-day -day drawdown. Um, so I don't have that for you, Henry. Uh, what I can say is we definitely had some drawdown because we weren't writing the strike, you know, $10 down below. Uh, but it was it was not very much. But we didn't we didn't write it as fast as it was crashing. So, but you can see we did walk away relatively unscathed. We didn't capture uh, most of this run up, but we didn't capture any you know very little of that crash. So that's that's what the uh, covered call can do for us. Okay, what other questions we got out there? Welcome everybody. Let's see some of the names out there we got. Textman, Rep Rep 120, Mark's out there, but he's uh, self-muted. Juliana Wisco, I think you're a new attendee. John is online. Hepler Group is here again, self-muted. Henry's on. Uh, Jerry's on a conference call today, but he's on. And we have two other uh, free trials uh, with no names uh, who are listening in. Any questions out there? Like we have a pretty quiet group today. Well, oh, let's see. Mark has a question. When do we make a trade? Well, when we make a trade, do we sell all shares in the portfolio? Uh, do you mean do we write a covered call for all of the shares? Yeah, so yeah, for sure. We uh, Specifically for our group, we only want to have even lots of 100 shares so that we can uh, protect that capital. So if you have a random amount of shares, uh, any amount that's outside of a multiple of 100, you won't be able to protect with the covered call. So yeah, certainly. And this is not designed uh, in terms of what we're presenting to you today to be a great growth strategy. We're not assuming you're 30 years old can weather a potentially five to 10 year uh, bear market uh, and then make back your gains in another five to 10 years and, uh, and do all right. You know, that's not the kind of risk our audience. Our audience is typically 55 to 70 years old, still, still pretty quick on their feet and can do a quick trade Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It takes about three minutes. And, um, and our audience really wants to generate a consistent, boring return for a long time and not have to worry about uh, seeing big losses in a, a bear market. Let me show you guys a preview of tomorrow's class now. So for those of you with a little extra capital, we do have a more advanced strategy, which is taking apart the SPY ETF and looking at what it actually owns. So these are the primary largest positions held by the SPY or the QQQ. And so when we do that, we now have the luxury of writing the strike at different levels based on where the market's predicting each individual stock will go. And so this portfolio you can see has nearly doubled the return of our SPY program. Uh, by removing the cushion of the ETF, we get a much better premium writing the covered calls. And we can aim where we write our strike uh, at a per security level. So this one, you really got to use our spreadsheet. If you hate spreadsheets, you could follow this program with no spreadsheet. You know, you you get the trade on Monday. You know how many shares of the SPY you have. You cover it. 
you write the new trade. It takes you three minutes. You can do this for the rest of your life, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You're going to generate income and you're going to protect your capital better than pretty much anyone else out there um, without having to risk losing a lot of money if there is no downside uh, to actually uh, be worrying about. If you want to follow this program, now you have to keep track of eight securities and you know exactly how many shares you own. And uh, so this becomes a little more valuable for folks in that boat. And so you can see we'll be covering these positions tomorrow and writing new ones uh, expiring not this Friday, but the following Friday. Another benefit on this product is that it does uh, only trade once a week. So for those of you who just don't want to have to do anything Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, this portfolio only trades on Tuesday. Okay, so Mark says, is the risk the same in this portfolio as the SPY? So it depends on your outlook. If you think that owning 500 corporations is less risky than owning the largest positions in the SPY, then from that standpoint, the SPY uh, is less risky. It's more diversified. If you think that uh, maintaining the right strike price on your covered call three times a week versus one times a week adds more security to your portfolio. That's another reason why you might say the SPY strategy is less risky. Now, what are the arguments that the high yield strategy is less risky than the SPY? So you can't say it's more diversified uh, because it's not. It's more concentrated. Well, this the SPY has a 5% position in Microsoft. We have a 20%. Uh, so most of these positions are about four times uh, what you'd actually find in the uh, SPY or the QQQ. So what's the argument that this is safer? Well, there's a big trend that the big companies uh, gobble up more and more market share over time and that they are taking out the little companies. So if the S&P 500 may have some some bruises from these eight companies taking out some of their smaller peers, well, all of a sudden, maybe this portfolio is safer. And if we look at it from the point of view of stock buybacks, who has the most money to buy back their own stocks? These companies do. So, so there's pros and cons of both. Um, this one also costs $150,000 to build where the SPY only costs 30,000. Also, the, the leading corporate buyback companies are outperforming the SPY for obvious reasons. So, so yeah, it's, it's really, I, I would say for most people, it should be more a question, what makes more sense for me? Number one, do I have enough money to, to buy the covered call strategy for the high yield? Okay, that's one. Two, do I want to manage eight positions or one? So at the end of the day, a lot of you just won't have enough capital to follow this program. And this one makes the most sense. Uh, for those of you who do have this much cash, you're willing to have potentially a little more risk. Maybe not, but perhaps yes. And you only want to work once a week, then this program obviously has... Uh, almost twice the yield uh, with less work. Okay, so uh, one of the new members says, what is a good amount of money needed to make this work? For example, 1000 a week. Uh, so you want to make $1,000 of income? So, okay, good question. So we're, we're trying to make anywhere from $30 to $150 three times a week per 100 shares of the SPY ETF. And so if we're playing it safe, which I like to do a lot, we may make less, but we're giving ourselves a huge cushion of protection. Uh, so you're going to need uh, anywhere from $100,000 to $200,000 worth of SPY shares to get that kind of income uh, with the SPY program. And you would probably need about half of that much if you're using this program. 
Now, if we do get a nice sell-off, then we'll be a little more bullish in our covered calls and the income con considerably jumps. But right now, unless you live in La La Land, you know, you should be pretty worried about uh, this going up straight for, for three months with no one else buying it. And at the same time, bond yields crashing. So I, I think that uh, playing it safe right now will prove very prudent and we might get closer to that 50 to 75 bucks uh, three times a week during April. And by the way, I do want to throw out this last slide here. Uh, for those of you who do want to save a little cash, if you call Mike at 505-322-9884, he does have uh, special pricing for all our products, including a quarterly option for the Diamond Level membership. So for those of you who do want to, uh, to get involved with some of our higher yielding covered call strategies, uh, we do have that option at a quarterly rate. Let's Jason, see what other questions we got out there. Jason, what if you put five times the amount of your money in the SPY to match the investment of this portfolio, which would be better off? So the, uh, yeah, so the, the ROI percentage is just a uh, change in value uh, on a percentage basis. So the, the high yield covered call program is delivering twice the results as our SPY program to date. Okay. Uh, so for dollar for dollar, the high yield program has delivered twice the return. And part of that is because I can't be so uh, so bearish in that one. You know, with the SPY trade, that we can get all worried three times a week and uh, miss out on this bull move, whereas the uh, the covered call on the high yield, you know, could only adjust once a week. Now, in a upward moving market, that high yield sure looks nice. But what happens when the market's going sideways or down? All of a sudden, the ability to, to move your strike on the covered call three times a week is going to be a really nice benefit. Now, that doesn't mean I might not throw out a, uh, tr a trade midweek for our, our high yield folks saying, hey, our covered call is up 70 percent. Let's let's roll it over a little early. So we if things did get nasty, uh, so I'm not going to just let the uh, the high-end folks uh, sit there and get slaughtered. Of course, we can do the same thing that the SPY does. Any other questions out there? Uh, is anyone planning on attending tomorrow's webinar where, where we'll be dealing with the covered call strategy on the high yield securities? When did you say you're launching your portfolio, Mark? Around the 20th? Yeah, around the 20th. Nice. Cool. And which one are you thinking about doing? Well, I'm thinking about the high yield and uh, doing the TBT simultaneously. Nice. Okay. So let's talk about how you would uh, just set that up in your spreadsheet. Okay. So currently your spreadsheet will have three tabs down below. I've hit the various tabs just so that people clicking on our track record can easily uh, find the right information. But uh, so this one doesn't have the TBT on the high yield, so you would use the diamond tab uh, for the covered calls on, on these eight. And then you'd want to uh, use this setting on the other tab for your TBT. So it makes a lot of sense to flow any extra cash you have that can't fit into a multiple of 100 into that TBT. So that's a good storage place. Uh, as you collect your profits, if you're not going to cash it out for income, uh, I would 
I'd be piling in on that TBT myself. So uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, you know, even if it's just a hundred or two hundred or a few hundred shares of the TBT, uh, at least you're not letting it sit in cash and do nothing. And then on Thursday, another reminder, we do have our emerging markets class. Uh, now this return investment's a little elevated just because we wrote some defensive covered calls. So uh, again, the true P&L is only when we cover and before we roll over. So uh, what does that mean? Let's take a look. So I take a screenshot of our profit after I've covered the covered call and before I write the new covered call and insert it into our daily trade alert. Uh, so if we're looking at the, the ROI right now, you can see it reads 7.76, uh, but the true profit we have uh, is slightly lower uh, just because we wrote that covered call in the money. So you can see the difference right there. So we have a, about a 1.5% uh, protection on this trade that we can afford for the market to, to drop uh, between now and Wednesday. And we'll still generate our target profit, which is anywhere from $35 on the low end to uh, probably around 125 max every, every option expiration. So again, that really adds up over time. Uh, if we're pulling closer to $100, that's a 0.35% basis return every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, including over the weekend. Uh, so that gives us 156 opportunities to do that. And uh, it adds up. So if you can get 100 bucks, 156 times, that's $15,600 of income per year. Uh, per 100 shares of the SPY ETF you own. Now, again, our biggest concern is a period of time that might look like this. Now, nobody can predict stock crashes. Uh, anybody thinks they can uh, is just guessing. Uh, but with our strategy, we can create a risk-free way to protect our capital with the covered call and generate an income. Now, of course, if things get hairy, there's other ways to capitalize on that. And we really have two planned strategies uh, that will roll out only if and when the stocks are already crashing. So I like to talk about, you know, the, the huge money managers, they have to react to things before it happens. So they have to be overly cautious. They have a ton of money to, uh, to trade and they, do move markets just by uh, trying to get in or out of them. But we're tiny little minnows in the, in the ocean. And we make almost no impact. So we can be very momentum based. We see the markets going in a downward direction. The covered call strike price is gonna go way, way, way lower, which will give us uh, instant protection every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, but then we're gonna be looking at a call option on the VIX. Uh, which will be an in the money call. So we'll buy it probably a dollar or two lower than it's trading at uh, as it's going up. So that's a tough trade to pull off. And that's why we don't want to just constantly have a VIX position open. Uh, that's just losing money every day. So that'll be the next line of defense. After that, rather than buying puts on the SPY, I'd rather buy puts on the QQQ. We can go two years out with a leap put option. So we need something really fundamentally breaking to issue that trade alert. And that would only be a 1% portfolio position. Uh, so the VIX will be around a 9% total portfolio position. 
and the out of the money QQQ will only be a 1%. So that's why we always have that 10% cash position on the sidelines ready to protect our capital. Uh, and then beyond that, the, the other opportunity to profit from a down move would be this SJB ETF. Uh, so this is short high yield. And basically we, we think that the corporate bond market needs to get in trouble to really cause a stock crash. They're the ones who buy the most equities. So as soon as credit gets tight, that's when we really are worried about uh, stocks. Um, and of course that could come true if we get this Chinese US trade deal under our belt, all the global data starts to pick back up and all of a sudden the Fed wants to raise rates. So that's, that's when we'd start looking at the SJB, the QQQ puts, uh, starting to move our strikes way lower and getting uh, ultra bearish. Right now we're really trading uh, with a slightly bearish flat sort of mentality uh, and not anywhere in the, the near term uh, trying to buy any long uh, put options. Hepler Group says, why would you buy a two-year leap option since downturns don't last that long? So, so actually downturns can last uh, a very considerable amount of time. But, but yeah, the main reason why is because if I buy a two-year option, I'm trying to sell it within a year. And on the same note uh, with the VIX, if I buy the six-month which is as far out as the VIX goes. Let's pull up the option contracts. Okay, so if we thought there was some volatility coming in, the VIX is good at protecting for about three months. So uh, we want to sell it with at least half of our option premium left. And um, if we went three months without it happening, you know, we're gonna lose a lot of value in that option. So the VIX is good for protecting about three months out while the QQQ can protect us for about a year out. So whatever the total time the option has, cut it in half and that's when we need to sell by. And so you're right, a lot of crashes really last, at least in the last two decades, have only lasted about a year to a year and a half. When you look at the uh, dot-com bubble and the 08 crash. Any last questions? Yeah, yeah, of course. So certainly um, anybody's bought options on the long side knows just how hard it is to get those to pay out. Uh, and that's why we'd rather be selling the options, writing them three times a week, uh, just slowly collecting the profits, not having to worry about, you know, whether the market's going up, down, flat so much. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for your time. We have a new trade alert coming out at Nine, uh, rather 11 Eastern tomorrow, followed by the one o'clock webinar. And we'll be covering the high yield covered call strategy, which to date is outperforming our SPY strategy two to one. Uh, and we did discuss some of the pros and cons of that strategy. So I hope all of you can make it. And uh, after that Wednesday, we will be doing the next SPY trade. So thank you everyone for your time and looking forward to a new alert tomorrow.